When you think of Jannah, Al Jannah, Allah. What does Jannah mean to you? Allah. Pleasure. Destination. Forever. I, I guess just kind of getting anything you've ever wanted. It's a place without worry, uh, without fear, without anxiety. Comfort maybe comes to mind. I imagine everyone being with Noor and everything being with light and Noor. Eternal happiness, no stress, no tiredness, no achy body, just pure happiness. It seems like a place where um, people receive blessings, but the difference is, you know, when we get these things in the dunya, we still have worries. When I think of Jannah, every single delight, every single thing we could ever want and yearn for is held in there. Uh, being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being able to meet the Sahaba, being able to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reuniting with my husband. And um, seeing him in his um, perfection. To me, he was perfect in this life, so I can't imagine how perfect he would be in Jannah. I'll meet you with my dad again. Sorry. No, it's okay. I lost him when, he, when I was 13. And I think every day since then, I think about uh, reuniting with him. How often do you think about Jannah? A lot, I would say. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Usually when I'm reading the Quran, um, it comes to mind a lot. Probably after every salah. Can you describe that to me? What I try to do is I try to do some zikr and I try to think to myself like the zikr that I do may be raising my ranks in Jannah if Allah accepts. So we made it praising Allah. Have you ever kind of rehearsed that conversation with Allah in Jannah? get to Jannah, you're meeting Allah for the first time. Why don't you just think about it? Just walk through the gates, you got suited in your, in your Jannah clothes, you saw the palace, you saw the rivers, you saw the family, and now Allah wants to have a conversation with you. And this isn't questioning, because the questioning is over. Think about that conversation with Allah. What do you want to say to Allah the first time you meet him in Jannah? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here because I know my deeds were, wouldn't have been the one that would get me there. Praise be to you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, this is, you know, this is for me, the only way to get through life is to, to have that connection. Um, so the fact that he's with me, he was with me during this, this time, this test, it means everything and that he wrote everything. He wrote the perfect plan. So really gratitude, expressing gratitude. I never really thought about that, but I think it would just be like, you know, making sujuda and praising Allah. It would just be enough, uh, like as a pleasure to just look at it him. It would just be just so much to gaze gratitude, at him would right? be enough. It would be so much gratitude. That would be enough. And like thankfulness. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Looking at him would be enough. That's beautiful. Yeah. You guys just want to stare at Allah's power time. I would just like to thank him in the most profound way that I can come up with at that time for the blessing of Islam. Um, it's it's a truly a beautiful de dean that has given us so much courage uh, to be human, to go out of our way to try to be better for the sake of pleasing Allah. I think even in that moment, I feel like I needed to apologize. Like, I know I didn't do it. Like, I know I didn't do enough. I know I didn't do all that I was supposed to do. It's like, yes, thank you, but also just like, I'm so sorry, Allah. And after you meet Allah, it's Friday, you're meeting a bunch of new people in Jannah, there's a gathering, look around, it's prophets and companions and historical figures. Who's the first person you want to kind of go up to and introduce yourself to? Rasulullah <laughs> What are you going to say to the Prophet I will thank him for bringing Islam to us and teach us and and I will ask him for all the Muslims. Other than the Prophet Islam, is there one person like you like I want to go meet that person and talk to him for a day? Musa. Musa. 
Muslim. And you changed your name to Muslim when you became Muslim? No, I was, uh, it was already Muslim. You were already Moses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you were Moses, you became Musa? Yeah. And now you're meeting Musa? Inshallah. Isa, Isa alayhi salam. Um, I'm a revert, um, you know, grew up Christian. So always been connected and learning about this man. So yeah, he must be a revered figure that, you know, it'd be interesting to have a conversation with him. The uh, Prophet Abraham, I would ask him about building the Kaaba. And then for some reason, I just, um, I was always attracted to the idea of his sons and building the Kaaba and just, and um, I don't know, I'll just go into depth about that. Khadija, see how she, how she did it. <laughs> What's your first conversation like with her? Probably ask her about, you know, accepting how she was so strong and accepting the Prophet's so and what made her continue because uh -huh. you know she was a, one of the first converts so uh -huh. I would just ask her what what drove you you know hi um, who is this incredible woman who Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he he loved so much that's she must be incredible you know you've been separated from your kids during the Day of Judgment. So it's been a while and you just got the news, Alhamdulillah, they're there too. So your kids run up to you, hug their mom after this long journey. How are you congratulating them? What are you saying to your kids? Oh, that would be the best moment ever. You know, if Allah makes it so, um, it would be just all play. <laughs> Running, they like to, you know, do all kinds of stuff to daddy. <laughs> you did it, mama. You did it. You passed the only test that is important. You did it. <laughs>